hello hello and welcome to a video that's actually not a tutorial uh, that is quite unusual for this channel it's uh, this video is going to be an um, overview of V-Ray 5 for Rhino you know I will just be taking a look at what came in with the update from V-Ray 4 uh, what's new and actually I'll be mostly focusing on V-Ray Vision uh, so this is a new thing that came uh, with V-Ray 5 and it's a real-time uh, rendering solution for V-Ray and by real-time I mean I mean real-time uh, similar to Unreal Engine or Unity right so we will be taking a look at um, at V-Ray Vision and we will be kind of I guess comparing it or, or rather since this is the first pass of chaos group doing this uh, we will be just looking at what works and what doesn't work so without any further ado uh, we do have a 3d model here that is just a rocket thing I don't even know what this is um, and we do have this little icon right here that says, uh, if I hover over it, starts V-Ray Vision and begins a session. So what I can do is I can click on it, of course, and run our V-Ray Vision session. So it's going to load up all of the geometry into this kind of, I guess, into RAM and will show it to us, right? So it's nothing special, nothing special at all, but this is rendered with V-Ray, well, to a certain extent, which means that um, all of the, like, like the preview of this is something like in the quality that you would expect to see from EV render in uh, Blender or from Unreal Engine for that matter. So you can see that it, work, it works quite well. There's the frames per second counter, uh, just drop to four, but usually it kind of hangs around 30, which is fine. Uh, then we have the live link. Basically, um, if this is broken, then stuff that we do in, in, in Rhino will not update uh, in this particular model or in this particular view. Uh, then we have some information, uh, basically how to navigate. Um, we don't care about that. We do have um, like the locked resolution mode or loose resolution mode. So this is basically, would you like to keep the aspect ratio of your output that you have described? Where is it? Right here and the render output. Would you like to keep that aspect ratio of 16 by nine or not? Right. Um, then we have uh, automatic exposure which is great so if uh, automatic exposure is turned off and I increase the, the light let me just quickly create a, a light source bam 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 just a rectangular light nothing too fancy um, where's the gumball there we go move it up bada bing bada boom come on stay there it's great and I take a look at this this is over bright right uh, if I increase the intensity of the light even further 300 this is completely over bright so auto exposure once that is turned on it will well it will do exactly what it says it does it will auto expose so it will balance out uh, light versus dark so you don't have any burned out pixels in the view so auto exposure is great uh, not that great if you're actually trying to calibrate the camera lens but you shouldn't be using uh, V-Ray Vision for that I will talk about that in just a second then you have a color correction tab where you can ca actually change the exposure manually you can change the contrast manually the saturation well we don't have any saturation uh, temperature of the color cold versus warm and tint of the color I believe it's pink versus green right yeah let me reset and then you have you know the possibility to export the image and that's it that's all that it gives you everything else is controlled through um, through Rhino so if I were to really quickly uh, try and build a scene from here that's uh, somewhat nice um, 
could actually kind of make a lamp right here. So there, that's it's a nice backlight. Um, I think it's called rim light in photography and film uh, filmmaking industry. Um, then let's rotate this bad boy like that and just position him something like that. That seems reasonable. And then just one more copy. Just bear with me for a second. I'm just building up a quick rig. Third copy like that. And I will be making all of these three copies of the light unique. So this, um, the, the intensity of all three of them, I will just have set it to 100. And I will make this light unique, this light unique, and this one is automatically unique because it doesn't have any more um, parented lights. So let's say this one is going to be red-ish, orange-ish. This one is going to be cold blue. And that one is going to be super strong. Uh, so let's say 500, but it's going to stay white. Uh, also, I will, of course, hide the lights because I don't want them to be, of course, I don't want them to be visible. So let me just jump to the lights section in the V-Ray Asset Editor and just, come on, options. Turn on invisible for all three of the light sources here. Uh, one last thing before we actually look at what V-Ray Vision gives us is I will go to the environment tab and turn off the background um, texture so that it's a nice black background. Okay, uh, where's our V-Ray Vision? There it is. The bloom is absolutely obnoxious. And auto correction, I don't even know if that is turned off or on. That that was indeed turned on. Is there a way of how to turn off the bloom? Hello? Because this is a little bit too much for my for my taste. And I think this is like the, the first um the first thing that, that you start noticing is that it starts breaking down quite fast. Right, the, the engine is still in very, very early stages. Even if I turn the exposure all the way down, it's still super intense. Um, just to give you a showing, let me turn off the view revision and I will just turn, turn on the interactive render just to show you how it's going to look like, how it would look like without, um, God damn it, I'm stumbling on my words, how it would look like rendered out in a regular fashion. And for some reason I can't do that, so let me just see if I can maximize this. Yes, I can do that. I'll talk about those tabs in just a second, but this is how it looks like. Right, and keep in mind, I'm I'm, I'm using a pretty, um, it's it's a decent laptop, but it's a very thin laptop. So if you, if you get what I mean, right, it's it's running at like a hundred degrees. So um, the 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 time that it takes to render out is not that great. But this is uh, with uh, interactive render and. Or is it this is going to be V-Ray Vision and you will notice one thing I, I hope you will notice one thing let's see if it's going to work or not no it's not going to work so you will not notice anything so this is where it starts breaking down um, stuff that you get in the interactive renderer will not necessarily translate to the stuff that you will get in V-Ray Vision um, and vice versa Okay, so that, that's the, the, the first thing that I'm a little bit skeptical about. Uh, let me make all of the lights much weaker. 5, 1, 1. So instead of 500, I'm using um, the strength of 5. Let's run V-Ray Vision again and just see. 
So as I was testing this out, I had troubles with uh, calibrating the whole thing. And yeah, as you can see here, this is not great. You know, definitely not um, not usable by um, these rectangular lights are definitely not usable. So let me delete them. So those are deleted now and everything is black. And what I'm going to do is I'll just turn on the sunlight. Uh, Rhino document sun that that can be turned on and this is what you know what kind of output we get and it's still glowing like crazy I have no idea why why that is what's up with the bloom what if for generic material we change the color to something much darker hmm. so if it's black it's fine but if it gets even a slight color, it becomes super bloomy, which is not great. Hmm. But the automatic, if we turn off the automatic exposure control, it starts looking decent. Um, I don't know what's, what's happening with that. Uh, probably some sort of a bug. Maybe I'm missing something. If I am, let me know. I don't see anything here that I might be that I might be missing. Um, tab moves the sun. Shift mouse left moves the sun up and down. Altitude changes sun intensity. Changes exposure compensation value. Nope, nothing, nothing there, nothing there. So there are some weird things to, to, to consider, you know, that's... Um, this is me rotating the sun and so on. So there are some weird things to consider um, that, that are not necessarily working that well. Okay, but for now, let's skip over the very vision part and let's look at other things that are that might be quite quite interesting for you so for instance um, this very uh, light generator is something that i'm quite interested in it's basically instead of you trying to pinpoint the ni a nice angle for the light what you can do is you can choose what uh, a preset, exterior or interior. So let's say I'll choose exterior. And you can see that you want the light source to be either sun and sky or HDR. So I don't know, let's, let's try HDR. And it gives you basically op options on how many unique styles would you like this uh, light generator to make. So in this case, it's 35 with three variations. Um, yeah, let's just see. It's going to be 105 variants. Maybe that's too much. Let's do 12, 36 variants. That should do the trick. So now it's calculating the light positions. Um, and it's basically going to start um, generating the, the, the different lighting conditions one after the other. All right, so that's first one, that's the second one, and so on, right? This is something that I think is quite useful and quite nice. So you just kind of give it, you just tell it to generate 50 different light conditions. It's going to do that. And then you just choose the one that you, that you prefer, right? Um, let's see. Maybe I should stop this. Yeah, let me stop this. Um, so nothing here is that that nice. Let me reset, come back to exterior, choose sun and sky. And here, three by three, it's going to generate nine variants. I'm going to try to generate sun and sky variation right, rather than an HDRI image variation. Still pretty dark, but I think we will find something that is, uh, that is useful, usable. Hmm. That one seems okay. Okay, let's let's try with that one. So I'll just double click on it. 
hit close, that's it. Now, if I check the light source sources, I see light generated the dome and it has the sky map here and it has the Rhino document sent here. I just need to remember to go come back to my settings and for background, uh, tick mark the uh, texture slot so that it actually shows the texture. So now if I look at it through V-Ray Vision and actually investigate if, if, if this has the bloom or not. Yeah, seems to be doing just fine. So I don't know what, what happened there with the insane bloom. I believe it was... Um, yeah, the, my guess is that it tried to compensate for the black background, so it kept increasing the intensity of the light, or rather of the lowering the shutter speed of the camera, and eventually we ended up with just too much. Um, so the frames per second is 30, which is great, that means it's running quite quite fast, and as you can see, the as I'm rotating around it, it it updates the what you might call it, the, the, the shadows and so on, and everything seems to be a-okay. Okay, so that's great. So this is that's that for, for this particular model. Let's look at where it breaks down even further. Um, actually, before we do that, are there anything... There are some cool things that I could show you. For instance, um, let's do uh, sphere tools. So this sphere right here... Sorry, sphere, spherical light. And this spherical right, light right here um, let's see, intensity is 100 for both of them, that's 100, make unique, that's gonna be red-ish, that's gonna be uh, pu -pu -pu settings, that's gonna be bluish again, there we go, let's take a look at not the V-Ray Vision render, but rather the um, real-time render, yeah, we need the lights to be much more intense. So let me stop the render for a bit. Select the lights. Uh, let's go for a thousand. I, kn I know that it's it's super intense, but I, I don't want to balance like keep balancing the uh, keep balancing the, 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 the lights one to another. So this seems okay. Uh, there's some light here, there's some light there. Um, let's look at the left-hand side menu here. So this is something that's new. Uh, before we had a bunch of buttons here in the bottom, right now we're dealing with layers. So all of your exposure controls, uh, color balance controls and so on are added like layers as if you were working in Photoshop or something like that. Uh, that's cool and all, but the most interesting thing is here, light mix. Um, so for, to, for this to work, it asks us to add light mix RE. I don't know what RE means, but we will figure it out. And then re-render. Okay, sure. Let's go to the settings and let's find where the hell that um, light mix RE is. Could it be DR bucket, lighting, no. Light mix, there we go. So RE stands for Render Element, of course. So you go to Render Elements tab and you choose Light Mix, like that. Um, group by individual light, sure. You click on the Render button and it's going to be rendering out. So now you can see here that Light Mix is not uh, just, black, uh, just a black screen anymore. It's actually... It, it does produce a, a image and you have uh, RGB colors and light mix and the only difference is that here all sphere light and, and so on all of these are lights right which we can control so I can turn them all of them off and then start turning them off sphere light another light sphere light one rhino document sun 
environment, self-illumination, rest, light generated dome. How cool is that, huh? This is uh, like com this is something that just works, and I love it. And also, one more important thing is, let's say this guy, I want it to be more intense. I just freaking change it to ten times more intense. That's it. It works. It just works. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so this is something that I'm going to be using constantly. It's it's wonderful. Uh, other than that, there's nothing special. Uh, like th there are some some nice uh, nice to haves that were added. For instance, um, in the materials, gen generic material under where is it? Here under add attribute, you can now add a uh, displacement attribute, for instance, or under add layers. No, it's not there. Where is it? Hello. Um, Oh crap, now I forgot. There should be some... Uh, uh, sorry, just give me a second. Uh, ah, there we go, contours. So it's under settings. So you can add contours to your uh, to your scene, you can change the line color, you can uh, say that uh, the width of the line is actually thicker and then you can see that inner line color uh, should be thinner like one or rather let's do yeah let's do one and three so that you can see and inner line color could be red and then you click the render button and bada bing bada boom uh, you get all of the all of these li uh, lines so you can end up having a pretty nice uh, uh, line drawing rendered out which which i find quite quite nice uh quite useful anyway let's stop here here and let's open up one test that i made with the v-ray vision so we're, we're going to finish up with actually breaking v-ray vision even further um so i do have these files here with proxies and so on, and we will start very simple with the smallest version. So this uh, particular project here is actually I can um, I can show you. Let me play. Yeah, let me play a, a video done in Unreal Engine for this particular project uh, that I've made. And then once it's done, we will you'll kind of know what kind of quality I expect from V-Ray Vision. Um, and then we can kind of move on from there. So video will play now. Thank you. 
So that's the quality that I expect from V-Ray Vision, and that's the performance. So keep in mind, on my laptop, that was real time. That was real time performance. So there was no rendering time, no nothing. It's it just kind of worked in like in real time. Of course, it wasn't 30 frames per second, but it was uh, like decent 12, 10 frames. Again, on a pretty low end laptop, right? So here, if I run a V-Ray, V-Ray, V-Ray Vision for this particular building, it shouldn't struggle that much because this is only 41 megabyte file and it doesn't have any fancy uh, materials associated with it. Let me just check one thing. It does have volumetric environment turned on though, which might result, yep, four or two frames per second. This is barely useful, usable. If I actually come in here and I turn off scatter GI, I think this will become a little bit faster. Do I need to stop it and run it again? Probably yes. Okay, let's try again. So now I have turned off scatter GI for my volumetric environment. So that means um, the light rays, you, you will not be able to have God rays, at least on a, on a crappy laptop, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's wait for the scene to optimize. Still four frames per second. God damn it. Not that great. Okay. Let's stop the preview here. Let me turn off volumetric environment altogether. And let's try. Can I just link it here? No, I can't, huh? I actually need to, okay. Do that and click that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just give it a second. It's going to optimize the scene and eventually it's going to work. Well, it's, uh, well, okay, there we go. 26 frames per second. Smooth, smooth like butter. So the main culprit was volumetric environment. If you get stuck, that means you need to change that. Um, do I have renders of this? So, well, actually, I'll show you renders in just a second, but this is how the preview looks like. I mean, it's not, uh, can I make it bigger? Yeah. It's not that bad. It sometimes dips to four frames per second for some reason. Oh yeah, right. That's because this is a 4K screen. So I'm actually, I was looking at it at a pretty large resolution, which you shouldn't do. Don't don't do that. Uh, use V-Ray Vision with caution. Like the the larger you increase it, the more pixels it needs to calculate, so to say. So this is how it looks like. Nothing too fancy. Um, the of course the normal maps and bump maps are barely visible. Um, I believe I have a normal map here. Nope. Nothing there. So it's, it's a very glossy preview, so to say. And is, this is just objects without any furniture, without nothing. Okay, let me close this, close that, and let's open up, open, uh, version two, let's say the medium sized uh, version. So this one is going to be around a hundred. Oh, sorry, never mind. It's three hundred twenty-seven megabytes. It's a much la. Don't crash, <laughs> please don't crash. That would be a shame. Um, it's a much larger piece, and the only difference uh, is that it has furniture. So if I were to select, oops, not select all furniture, select objects. You can see all of the furniture that it has. And also it already has a preset camera that's apparently 
Oh my god, that's that is apparently two in two point perspective. So let's just switch to perspective view. And this is what what we have. Cool, cool. So let's take a look at VRE vision. And I'll probably pause the video just because we want to I don't I don't want you guys to to wait for the optimization to go through because now it's going to say that it's uh, it's it's going to optimize the scene for a while yeah there we go okay 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 so we're back and this is how it looks like with medium um res resolution should we say resolution medium amount of elements so just um, to clarify again to reiterate uh, I have added the furniture here, which bumped up the size of the file to 327 megabytes. Um, and besides the furniture, uh, I have added these rocks and the landscape. So let's look at these rocks actually, or actually we can look at the landscape, might as well. So this is a <clears throat> pretty intense material with uh, three different materials as you can see here uh, there's some moss there's some leaves and there's some I don't know some crap on the ground um, and also a normal map in this case uh, actually works so I'm not sure what what's up with that because um, a normal map has been placed on the on these bricks as well but they don't show up perhaps it's a bug i don't know but as you can probably see everything is super glossy all of the corners are pretty sharp and and, and so on so this is a trade-off that you get with real-time rendering and something that you can uh, that you need to hide in terms of a rock it's a little bit stretched out but uh, other than that i think it's okay actually let me quickly show you so these are the renders that I've done, uh, the still image renders that I've done with Vray from that particular scene. Um, and as you can see here, it's much more matte. It doesn't have a lot of uh, glossiness, right? And especially the bricks, the bricks do have that displace, uh, displacement or that normal map. In this case, it's a mixture of displacement and normal. Maybe that's the problem. Um, let's jump into a large. So let me open new large file. Open. There we go. Uh, so let's do that. Furniture, select objects, just delete them. OK, so here, as you can see, we are starting to deal with proxies. Uh, so that's the first thing, and also I'll hide the disable volumetric environment, of course. Uh, so that's the first thing that uh, that we'll be looking at once we run Vray Vision. So this particular file is almost the same file from which I've made render three. Let me find it in Photoshop. Uh, while while it's optimizing the scene. Vray 3, there we go. So it's almost the same file, right? The same 3D model. So we will take a look at, and this hasn't been photoshopped, right? Uh, this is straight from like a raw, uh, I, I guess you could call that it's, it has been photoshopped because I did made some uh, exposure control, right? To, to, um, give it a little bit more of a hump but other than that it's not photoshopped so it should be uh, at least a little bit similar to what we will see in the in the very uh, vision tab so to say oh so i can see that it's already loading in and this is something that you will do i really need to uh, there we go and this is something that you will encounter quite a bit. Um, it's expected. Once 
V-Ray runs out of memory, be it uh, graphics memory or uh, straight up RAM, it will become super crashy, as you can see here. So it, it becomes unstable quite fast. I am running uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM and it's chewing through those 16 gigabytes like crazy. And what it's doing with alt tabbing, this, this kind of alt tabbing motion, is that it's uh, loading in one texture at a time for one geometry type at a time, right? And it's doing that because it's using your hard disk space rather than RAM for um, texture referencing right into this model so it's it's basically it runs out of ram so it needs to use your hard disk and your hard disk is super slow so once it reaches that limit it will run super super slow and this is um at this point the most frustrating limitation is that with unreal engine or with uh, EV render in Blender, I never had issues uh, of, of reaching 16 gigabytes of RAM with proxies. Never, never happened, happened to me. While here, even with a highly um, low resolution model, so to say, so uh, it's only these trees that you see on the screen that are actually in the model. Uh, even with this, we are reaching that uh, cap of 16 gigabytes so easily. It's like only half of the textures are loaded in. By the way, I have reduced the size of each of the textures to 2K resolution. I usually use 8K resolution textures. Doesn't help, right? It's still unusable. So let me stop this for, 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 for now and let me just show you the real-time render, or, or sorry, interactive render output, how, how that's calculating, and then you can draw conclusions on your own. What I see here with uh, V-Ray Vision is a good start. It's, it's a definitely a good start for, for a, a inspection tool. So let's say you're working in a company and you need just to show a 3D model in progress to another person who's working in the same company, be it another architect, another designer, or what have you, and you don't want to spend time rendering and polishing a render, rather you want the person to be able to kind of rotate around your 3D model, but also see all the materials and the light conditions. This is what V-Ray Vision is going to be aimed at. At least that's my, uh, that's my opinion. Is it there yet? Well, yes and no. So as a first pass, it's great, but it needs to be much more optimized compared to the competition, you know, compared to Unreal, uh, compared to Eevee and so on. It, it does need to be optimized quite a bit. Why is this not rendering for me? Hello? Anyway, I'll, I'll keep talking while it's, while it's doing that. Um, so it, it does need to be optimized. And I think once, once it is optimized, it's going to be useful, not just for people in company, uh, who work in companies and need to share the files with each other, but also uh, for us individual users. Uh, just to investigate your model from another perspective, because let's be frank, uh, this um, shaded view, shaded preview doesn't give you a lot of information, even if you go to edit shaded settings and you choose, the, uh, choose to show a material, rendering material here instead of object's color. That's not enough. Let me kill the, the render here. I don't know, it's, it's not loading in anymore. Probably bricked it. Let me just show you these. So that's the render. Um, some more, that's the render. 
Maybe I need to make them bigger. That's the render. That's the render. That's the render. For those of you who are interested in uh, the procedures that I that I've done to scatter these objects and to create this uh, ground material to add these uh, all of these stones I will probably add like a small video to the end of this one which actually is gonna come in right about now because we're done um, I have already blabbed enough this V-Ray 5 is definitely a very very strong jump um, forward in terms of functionality um, we have seen quite a bit of incremental like small step increase in chaos group with their very releases uh, this is not that light mix is amazing uh, very vision is going to be amazing someday not not there yet but it is hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to subscribe um, and I'll see you in the next video.